Hey guys, it's Joe B. I'm here with the Mach 1. It's been a little while since I had a video, but uh, we actually moved. <laughs> we moved to the next town over. So I had to move the Mustang, I had to move the parts, I had to move everything. And I'm finally getting back to working on some stuff I wanted to work on. Um, small tidbits. Uh, I was working on a little filler right here. I wanted to take a peek at this right here, but I ended up I don't know. This the, the hole is now in the correct spot, but as you can see by my Sharpie, I've got a low spot. And if you press on it, it bounces. So I need to figure out what's going on with that, or just get a whole new hood. So I, I'm still debating that. And I did a little filler spot here. Um, still working on a little area right here that I had noticed. But the main point of what I wanted to look at today was in order to move the car I had to consider a lot of the stuff that was happening with the leaks and the trans pan is now corrected I got a new gasket I had a guy down the street do it he used a little silicone in addition to the gasket and now I've got no problems with the trans pan leak the trans pan is good and I've got no leaks here so the same guy also did a nice job on my differential to make sure that wasn't leaking but the one thing that was leaking, that is notoriously leaky on our cars, is the power steering, um, what do you call this, control valve. Let's see, it's a little bit. So here's my power steering control valve, which has been, been rebuilt along with every piece of the steering. And when I first installed it, it worked great. Um, this is an original Bendix that's been rebuilt. But after I'd say after about eight months um, I started to notice drips and you know how you find these is you you get a little cloth and you you towel it all off until it's clean and then you run it you turn the wheel a little bit and you just look here and you see where the drips are coming from and I noticed that my drips were coming from this seal right here um, where the actual housing plugs into the part that screws onto the linkage. So I'm going to turn the camera so you maybe you can get a better look than I can. But it's this, these two bolts here, here and here. Hold these together and this is, this is just a cardboard gasket here. Um, two very thin pieces kind of fused together or taped together or glued together, I don't know. But they don't do a good job at all. So, uh, I had a very easy time taking this apart because I had already done it in order to put these pieces together. I've got all new tie rods. The only thing I think is the drag link is still original. Everything else is new. So what I did is I, I took out the cotter pin and I took off this bolt. And then I loosened up the tight spot here where the control valve itself is tightened up onto the drag link and then you, you use a pitman arm and you, you bang it and push it and pull it down. Now if you break that boot, if you break this boot right here, you're, you're going to have to get a new kit and put a new bolt on. So I, I didn't have to do that since mine was already taken apart and it, it comes apart easy. But after that you can unscrew it and it just unscrews, screwing mine back on here. But you also of course have to jack up your car safely. Make sure to use jack stands for safety and put a tire in the way so it doesn't crutch your back. But you jack it up here so that there's there's no pressure. See that's where I'm holding the weight right there. There is no pressure here on the tie rods. If there's pressure on the tie rods this thing's not going to just drop out. So after you tighten it up enough it'll go right back into the pitman arm there which goes into your steering box. This is the pitman arm and here's the hole goes right up in and you put this guy on I think this is a I think this is a half inch put a cotter pin in to lock it in place the other tip I got is you've got four hoses that go into your control valve the ones that go to your power steering pump which are the pressure and return lines these are the steel ones and the ones that go to your cylinder I used little tape with sharpie on it and I labeled them and then I took an iPhone picture so that I would be able to know 
without a doubt which ones go where. If you don't do that, you, you probably will get it right. But if you get it wrong, your steering wheel could freak out when you turn it on, you know, it starts to turn on its own and things like that. And I just didn't want to have to deal with any headaches or any worry about what else could be causing this thing to leak. So I'm going to get this back together and we'll see how things are going as far as leaks go. But when I took it out and I took it apart, I used some degreaser just on the outside to clean it off and I, I squeezed some silicone caulk into there. And then I let it sit for about three days, which was way longer than it needed, but I had other stuff going on. And I just want to show you the caulk that I used. I got this at Walmart. I think it was like $2.99, but it's some of the best stuff I've ever used. Clear all-purpose silicone sealant. And I just got it at Walmart for like three bucks, maybe four bucks for one tube, and it's just, it's perfect. It's, it's clear, it's clean, it turns into this nice, flexible, plast um, not, not plastic, but it's like, like rubbery goo, which, if it's, as you can see, if, it, if this were very small, a very thin film, it would be perfect as a gasket. So that's what I did for the master control valve. And uh, we're going to keep working on it, make sure that it doesn't leak on the new garage. And this is Joe B. with the Mach 1. I'll see you later.